All right, this video is going to be about how to install PFSense in a virtual machine uh, so you can use it to basically simulate on one computer having a private network. So I'm using Oracle uh, VirtualBox and this is a pretty standard mode here. All right. So we're going to start by clicking on new because we need a new virtual machine. Uh, we're going to call this one uh, PF Sense. I'm going to store it in my VirtualBox VM folder just like it's supposed to. In this case, I'm using a BSD and I need a 64 bit BSD, uh, free BSD. That's what PF Sense comes in. So I'm going to hit continue here. Uh, 1024 megabytes of memory is great. I'm actually just going to change it to 2048 just to have plenty of spare room. Uh, you need at least 1024 I know to install Snort, which you might want to do later. Um, anyway, 2048 is plenty though. I'm going to create a virtual hard disk for that, just a normal one. Pick the defaults here. Dynamically allocated works just fine. These particular settings work great also with the 16 gig hard drive. And then we are ready to go almost. Next up, I need in my PFSense to create, um, to have two different network settings. So I need two network adapters. So first, my first network adapter needs to be bridged. That is one adapter of my PFSense network adapter is going to connect into my just regular network. So this would be the public side of my PFSense or the WAN interface. All right, so for adapter two, I'm going to choose, I need to enable that. This one, I'm going to choose internal network. Um, I usually like doing host only, but um, internal network, you get to name the internal network and actually it ends up being easier because I didn't actually set up the adapter beforehand. So we're just going to hit OK here. And now we're going to have two uh, network adapters. Notice here I got adapter one. It's on my bridged adapter. And number two is on my internal network adapter. All right, so we're almost ready here. What I want to do here is go ahead and we'll do in the settings, I'm going to connect my optical drive to my um, PF sense that I just downloaded. That's actually over here. Let me just drop that in here. So there's my PF sense ISO. It's already unpacked. Now when I hit OK, and now when I start, it's going to boot off of that CD. So there's my optical drive, and we are ready to go. Now we're going to hit start. I'm going to worry about some of this stuff going on in the background in a minute. This is where we need to install from. This part here where we're auto capturing or it's showing some notes, I'm going to click this button, which just hides them forever because I know what those mean. You might not. And if you want to see them over and over, you can click the little circle with the X through it, this means don't show it anymore. All right, here we go. Copyright and distribution notice. Now you're gonna to have to get used to in this case. I'm gonna go ahead and let this capture. Notice here my host key is identified as left command. This is on a Mac. If you're on Windows, it will typically be the left uh, control. What that means is when I hit capture here, my mouse is going to disappear. If I hit the left control, my mouse will reappear and I'm back in business. Anytime I click in, the mouse will be and keyboard will be frozen in there and I have to click the left control to get it out. So we're going to accept this. We are very excited. We want to install PFSense. We're going to continue with the default key map. We are going to go ahead and just kind of accept the general options. So sometimes you need these um, other ones, but for now we're just going to go with this. Proceed using default options. Um, we don't need any of this stuff. We're going to hit the space bar right now and hit OK. Last chance. And we do indeed want to destroy the contents of that disk. And it's going to 
install pfsense for us. the installation is now finished. Would you like to open a shell? And in fact, I don't need to make any manual modifications. So I'm just going to restart this. Before I restart though, I'm gonna very quickly get my mouse back. I'm gonna click here and I'm going to remove that disk from the virtual drive. Usually it's not a big deal if you leave it in because it'll just reboot from the disk, but um, I don't want it to be there sort of going forward either, so I'm going to reboot it now. And then we're very excited. Something crazy just happened. Let's go ahead and force restart this. Reset it. All right, once you get to this screen, you'll note here uh, we're using on the WAN side, we have DHCP, so it's picking up an IP address and the DNS information, all that stuff for DHCP from my WAN network. And then on the LAN side, it has a fixed IP address. So this is its private subnet, this 192.168.1.1, a 24-bit subnet mask, and um, I'm gonna break here and we'll come back in with sort of how to configure it. 